Good morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream, and today is November the 9th, and I'm going to do your Just for Today in a meditation. I hope you're having a beautiful morning. Let me go ahead and share that screen with you. Struggling with a little bit of a cold still. So if I take a long break in between, a brief break, rather, it's to cough, okay? Just to give you a heads up, November 9th, the best laid plans. It is our actions that are important. We leave the results to our higher power. That comes from basic text page 91. There's an old saying we sometimes hear in our meetings. If you want to make God laugh, excuse me, make plans. When we hear this, we usually laugh too, but there's a nervous edge to our laughter. We wonder if all of our carefully laid plans are doomed to fail. If we are planning a big event, a wedding, a return to school, or perhaps a career change, we begin to wonder if our plans are the same as our higher powers plans. We are capable of working ourselves into such a frenzy of worry over this question that we refuse to make any plans at all. But the simple fact is that we really don't know whether our higher powers plans for our lives are carved in stone or not. Most of us have opinions about fate and destiny, but whether we believe in such theories or not, we still have a responsibility to live our lives and make plans for the future. If we refuse to accept responsibility for our lives, we're still making plans, plans for a shallow, boring existence. What we make in recovery are plans, not results. We'll never know whether the marriage, the education, or the new job is going to work out until we try it. We simply exercise our best judgment, check with our sponsor, pray, use all the information at hand, and make the most responsible plans we can. For the rest, we trust in the loving care of the God of our understanding, knowing that we've acted responsibly. Just for today, I will make plans, but I will not plan the results. I will trust in my higher powers, care, loving care. I like that. That's a beautiful, beautiful meditation. Let's go ahead and take a moment of silence followed by the wee version of the serenity prayer. Moment of silence now, please. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Just for today, please, and thank you. Wow, November 9th already. Time waits for no one. Time waits for no one. I can't overemphasize that the time each individual has, for the most part, is unknown. We have no idea what will inspire or uh, what will take, you know, take place once we move out from our homes and even within our homes. When people start waking up, we have no idea what kind of mood they're waking up in. Um, even laying down at night, we have no idea for sure um, that we are going to wake up. However, we do plan on waking up, don't we? That's the simplest way I can put this. I go to bed at night and I plan on waking up. And because I plan on waking up, there are some things that maybe I could have done today, but because I know tomorrow is coming, I'm planning on tomorrow. I make plans to handle such and such tomorrow. Some people will call that procrastination. 
I call that just making sure I don't take on too much in a day. I do as much as I can within the day, generally speaking, right? For instance, another thing at night, I have three people in my house that I have a relationship with my husband and the two boys. And there's other people outside of the home that I have a relationship with, like their father. Um, but generally speaking, the people within my home are the ones that will be the last people to see me before I go to sleep. So I try to make sure each night that I greet them. I let them know how much I love them. I find out if there's anything weighing on their heart that they want to share with me. Anything they need for me to do or to consider. I try to give them my best, even in my exhaustion. I try to make sure they know that I love them. And they do the same thing. This is a very polite home. We have one restroom, so that means one shower. No one goes in to take a shower without checking with the, with the other people in the house. Does anyone need to use the bathroom before I take my shower? We have a very courteous, considerate, polite home. And so I check on them, but they also check on me. What does this have to do with it's our actions that are important. We leave the results to our higher power. I have absolutely no true ideal that I will wake up the next day or that they will or that my husband will. And in the simplest context of this, we are making plans for tomorrow by dealing with what is in front of us today each other, how we love each other and how we care for each other. I never want my last breath to be taken and they not know how much I cared about them. It's an honor to live with them. It's a privilege. It's something I get to do. And I prepare for tomorrow, which might not include me by loving them deeply today. Now, the same thing is true about making plans for the future. Absolutely, positively, I can make a plan to go to the university. I can make a plan to get married, start a new job. I have no idea whether or not those things will wake up come morning. Do you, you follow me? I have no idea whether or not those things will wake up, in other words, be successful come tomorrow, down the road, in the future. However, I do plan on them being successful, but I have no idea whether or not they will be. That does not stop me from trying to give it my best shot that doesn't stop me. Some people, if you're anything like me, it used to stop me. My worry about the future and whether or not it would be successful used to paralyze me with fear. In fact, at the, the last sentence of the first paragraph says, we are capable of working ourselves into such a frenzy of worry over this question that we refuse to make any plans at all. Are you a person that has been paralyzed by fear of the future? You don't know if it's going to work out, so I don't want to look bad. I don't want one more blemish on my record. I don't want one more failure on my record. So why even bother? It's easier not to than to and then fail and then have to explain why it didn't work out. Especially if you're like me, believing that through prayer and meditation, I get direction from my God about what I should and should not do. And then I step out on that. And if it doesn't work out, Wow, 
did I, did I know or understand God correctly? I'm human. And even though I'm making plans and giving it my best, and I believe that this is the direction, there's a lot of other factors at play. When I get into the flick of it, when I get into it, it may be a professor that I can't handle. It may be an atmosphere that is triggering the person on the other end of this plan may decide that I'm not really, I don't have the same intentions. I'm not trying to marry you. I just want to be friends with benefits. You understand what I'm saying? We have to make plans. We can't plan the results, but we still can trust in God and his loving care for us or its loving care for us or her <laughs> day's loving care for us, right? I don't care how you twist it. Do you or don't you have a higher power that you trust in? That loves and cares for you and wants the best for you. I don't know. I do. And it's really that relationship that allows me to take chances. It's that relationship that allows me to step out on faith. Man, I wish I had time to tell this story, but I just don't. Many years ago, many years ago, I came back from Africa with a, a bachelor's in biblical studies and it was, it was quite a lot of money and planning that went into living overseas for all that time. And I got back and I, I heard that it, it would be credentialed by the time I returned and I didn't have to worry about that, but I did have to worry about it because it was not credentialed education. And I fell flat on my face when I got back from Africa, went into a deep depression. And it took me a couple years. And it was one conversation with one lady that sponsored me for one month. She happened to show up at a meeting that I was chairing to show her love and support for me. And I wept. It was just her and I, and I wept and I told her, man, I did all of this to only do all of this. And she said, it just sounds like you need to, you know, pull your bootstraps up and en enroll back in college. Okay. You did the work you needed to do. You got the bachelor's. It's still yours. A lot of people don't respect it, but it's called non-traditional education. And you have attained that goal. But now you want something that's credentialed. I challenge you, get yourself back in school. And I did. And it was a long journey to all these degrees that I have. It was a long journey. I made plans and it didn't work out the way I wanted to. And so I had to reboot myself and make some other plans. There's six degrees on my wall today. Six degrees. And I surely could have had a doctorate by now. And I'm just about to go into internship for a master's in counseling. And I still have a desire to have a PhD in philosophy. You have to try. I'm telling you from my own experience, strength and hope, I made the best laid plans possible. The results were not what I wanted. It took a couple of years for me to regroup, but I did and I am. And if I can do it, you can do it. I believe in you. You hit me up in the email and you let me know what it is that you're fearing and what it is you want to do. And together, will come up with a strategy for you to be able to go about it. I will assist you and help you because I know it's important to feel accomplished. You know, my name is Mighty Stream and I've enjoyed talking to you. I hope that you have a wonderful day on purpose. 
Today will be your last November 9th of this year, period. You will never get this day back. So why not make it your best day? Talk to you soon. I've enjoyed talking to you and I will be talking to you tomorrow.